Welcome to one of the most important chapters in this series, Lighting, the Bane of a 3D Artist. This is going to be a fairly lengthy video, but I promise you will gather a few things. So stick around, open up a pack of crisps, lay back and just listen. Instead of the usual way of talking about lighting, here we will touch another angle of the whole lighting process. We will try and devise a method. So instead of randomly placing lights and experimenting and getting frustrated while struggling to nail the look, by the end of this video, you will have a thought process or methodology to light up your scenes by setting in some ground rules which you can follow, it'll help you light up your scene without hitting that creator's block. We'll break the whole process down into workable steps. I know there's where a lot of people struggle, so I'll be speaking from experience and tell you my method of lighting your scene. In the end, I'll tell you a few add-ons that will help you a lot in your lighting process. And owing to the importance of lighting, we will make it into a four-part sub-series with the other three parts coming up in the next weeks. Let's jump in, shall we? So you can have a fairly simple scene with a lot less effort put into modeling, but if it is lit well, it will appeal to the eye much more than if everything else is at an acceptable degree, but lighting is subpar. Same scenes look drastically different when placed in different lighting scenarios. We'll divide it into three tiers based on the control you have on the lighting setup. Basic, Intermediate and Advanced, or Muggle, Riddle and Voldemort, if you may. But before all of that, the first and foremost thing is referencing. I emphasize this a lot. You should collect references for every part of the process, and lighting is no exception. So go to ArtStation, just have a brief look on the scenes that look similar to yours, gather them in PureRef and analyze how the lights are working in the scene. Let's now discuss tier 1, Muggle. If you're starting up and you need a basic lighting which looks good, you will either want a moody lighting or you want a natural light. So for that you can either use a single area light or use an HDRI. Let's talk about moody lighting first. In this simple scene we have a model with a beveled background. A circular area light is placed just above the subject, moved a little forward and angled a little towards the backdrop. This introduces good shadows. You can increase or decrease the size of the area light to adjust the harshness of the shadows, adjust the power of this light and you will have a good viable setup to show your models. This technique has an advantage of minimalistic look and you get that gradually fading background that eventually fades into darkness. Okay, tier 1, natural light. Just go into the world shader, select the node and press Control T. Here you can bring an HDRI from Polyhaven, link will be down below. An HDRI is a spherical projection of a real environment captured with a camera. You can even make your own HDRIs using your phone. Since HDRIs are real life lighting conditions, the way they light the 3D scene adds to their realism as well. They do have a downfall though because they aren't really flexible and you get what you get out of the box. You can bring a couple into your scene, adjust the strengths and attach them to the output to see which ones you like the best. In order to change the direction of the light, you can change the Z rotation of the HDRIs. Alright, tier 2, Riddle. Let's introduce 3 point lighting setup and as the name suggests, it's made up of 3 lights. A large main illuminating area light or the key light. This falls at 45 degree angle of the subject from the front and positioned a little higher and lights up the major part of the subject from the side. The sort of larger and closer to the subject the area light is, the softer will be the shadows and harsh micro details will get soft. The second light in the scene is the fill light which fills the shadows. This should be about one third times as powerful as the key light and it serves the purpose to lift the shadows a bit from the other side. And this reveals the form. Thirdly, there is a backlight or a rim light which separates the subject from the background and that makes it stand out. 
This separation gives depth to the composition. This rim light is oftentimes a colored light as well and can be treated as an accent light. This whole setup is mostly used to light up portraits. You can use it to light up your solitary product shots as well and in this way we have a fair degree of artistic control of how the subject looks to the eye. Interestingly, this exact setup is what I'm using right now while talking to you. I have a large airy light just outside the frame at 45 degree angle right here. On my left there is a white wall that bounces the same light and lights the shadows up a bit and functions as a fill light. The yellow light on the back serves as the rim light for that spatial separation. So let's now take this a step further, tier 3, Voldemort. Let's open our scene and see what's happening. This is the grayscale animation. Voldemort is casting a spell, Dementors are flying in the background. Right away we'll know that this should be lit up in rather dark tones. That's why I've chosen this example because dark scenes are generally harder to light up. Let's pull up some references and see how we are going to light up this scene. Like in the reference, we will try and introduce the light from the left side and angled slightly. Finally, now let's talk about the thought process of lighting relatively complex scenes. When you first start lighting your scene, Start by lighting the most important thing in the scene or where you want the viewer to shift the focus towards or where you want the story to start. Here, instead of area lights or point lights, we will use spotlights to have a very tight control of where the light falls, its spread and its fall off. This is our unlit scene with minimal light just coming from the emissive shader on the moon and the sky. We have a camera framing set up already and on the right side we have our reference. Below is our grayscale scene. First off, think about what the environment generally is. This currently is a full moon night, so there should be some amount of ambient moonlight in the scene. We've achieved this by using a sunlight coloured a bit blue and coming from the side as in the reference. Now notice that the moon is at the back but the light is coming from the left and that puts us into a bit of dilemma. But it's a good opportunity to tell you that you can bend the rules if it helps your composition. In this scene I wanted the character lit from the left side because that enhances the form a bit and we definitely want a moon in the background. So now we have a small amount of ambient moonlight. Now, think about what is the next most important aspect of the scene that you want to highlight and shift the focus towards. Think about it for a bit. It's our character here. So light it up and with the spotlight from the side, that's step one. Next, for when the character moves a bit forward, and musters up that power to cast the spell, he gathers some green energy. So we should have some green tinted light lighting him up in his power stance. So now our character is lit. What is the second most important thing that you think should be lit? We should be able to see what's going on in the foreground. Notice that I've used these punctate planes to break up the light to non-uniform islands of the light. We call them gobos for goes between the optics and we'll talk more about them in the upcoming part of the lighting. Now what's the next most important thing to light up and sell the vibe of the scene? Hmm. What about this graveyard in the background? Not too much such that it takes away the focus from the main character and obviously not too little that it's barely noticeable. This will add to the aura that we are going after. So here is the graveyard light. Next, this house needs a small amount of attention as well. So a dedicated similar light for the house object. Now, next important thing is to highlight this Dementor interaction with the hangman. So let's light up with the same method. Remember we're breaking these lights into little islands for randomness. Finally, we have a small light to illuminate the wall of this castle. 
but just barely so that we know it's there. Now as a final step, step back, take an overview of what your scene is and see what auxiliary lights do we need to enhance the overall look. Well, this fire plane here is not illuminating the inside of the shack really well. Why don't we even it out a bit by a yellow point light? Because fire is a point source of light. And now the fire has some life in it. Finally, the Elder Wand Voldemort is holding can have slight green light as if it's preparing for that final spell. So we have a light over the tip of the wand as well. You can even take the light away from the scene by assigning a negative value to the light. So you can really dial in where you want the light to be and where you do not want it to be. So we went from this to this. By the way, I have free model and cloth simulation of the Dementor on my Gumroad that we are using in our scene here. You can download it and play with it and use in your projects as well. Link is always down below. In our mining tower scene here, we've used the same approach of lighting the scene from most important first to least important in the last, and then some practical lights in the end. The story starts by the mining tower from which the metal ore comes. So we light this first. Since we've made a bulb on it, a point light with high intensity makes sense. The next important thing is the gold ore itself. To make this rock texture stand out, we use a light placed at an acute angle from them to really emphasize the form and texture of the rocks. We can then move on with the story to further light up the scene. There's one important point here. EV as a raster engine computes all the lights in the scenes all at once. So bear in mind that if you increase the number of lights in your scene, your viewport performance is going to be very, very slow because it's computing everything at the same time. For lighting, there are two add-ons that I would highly recommend if you want to speed up your lighting workflow. First is Pure Sky. It makes a very convincing sky and atmosphere. Day, night, stars, clouds, dust, haze, you name it. Second is Blender Guru's Pro Lighting Studio. It's a large collection of pre-made lighting setups that you can just apply to models. It's essentially a one-click solution. So this add-on is a godsend. So you can go check these out from the links below along with the revision ebook of the series that I've written if you feel like having all of this information on your fingertips. Subscribe if you learned a thing or two and if you want to be updated when the next three parts in lighting get released. And I will see you soon. Farewell.